Okay, James with Love My Pups, My Breeding Supply. Subscribe to us, check out our website. We've got wonderful products if you're breeding dogs or look, looking after puppies, great place to go, wonderful products. Okay, 12 part series, we just did the DNA and Punnett squares. Now we're gonna talk about all the colors that you might see on a DNA report. Now, this is specifically talking about French's Bulldogs. There are some other colors that are out there to some of your other breeds, you know, like Harlequin, um, but I'm not, I don't know enough about those to talk about those here. But look, the same rules apply. So, you know, if you've got a, a breed that's a little bit different, there will be some other colors that are available and some of these may not be in your breed. But here we go. All right, so I'm gonna put down all the potential, all the letters that you're gonna see on a DNA report. Um, all right, so let's, and some of these, some of these genes interact. Some genes are stand by themselves. Some of these genes, uh, their interpretation is based on other genes that are present. Okay, so we have the A locus. And in the A locus, you can have a Y, a T, and A. There's three possibilities that you can see on the A locus. And these are to do with fawns, tan points, and recessive black. I'm not gonna go into any of these in any detail here. We're gonna do another video specifically on each of these. Okay, the next one is the, the brindle gene. And this is shown different ways on different reports. I'm gonna write it as KB. This is the presence of brindle. And this could be KB. Um, actually, there is a version KBR that I don't think animal genetics and those people can do yet to distinguish those. And then there's KN, means you don't have the gene, or sometimes it's just shown as N. So either you've got the brindle gene or you don't have the brindle gene. S, S is the pi, this is, I'm gonna write down side of this, this, is the brindling gene. This is called agouti, I'm gonna spell it wrong, agouti, God knows what that stands for, but anyway, it's agouti. This is the pi gene. This is the one that's responsible for a dog that has spots. So this one is either S, which you have it, or N, you don't have it. Those are the two options on that one. The E gene, this is to do with the E gene. This is to do with cream. So the E gene is to do with cream and also black mask. It's all buried together. So here we're gonna put this down as cream and masks. What color the mask is on the dog. So the choices here would be E, that you don't have it. It's a recessive gene. Um, or little e, you do have it. Uh, and it's also married to em, you do have a black mask, or em, you don't have a black mask. So there's four possibilities that can be on that particular locus. The rest of these genes, well, not quite true. The majority of these genes now are what are called recessive genes. You have to have two copies to be expressed. So this is dominant. This is recessive, this is recessive. So I'm just gonna put over the side here, dominant. It means it just takes a single copy for that to show up. Okay, next one is the, what we call the blue gene. It's actually the dilution gene, D, which is responsible for bluing. It's really a, a, um, a gene that if you have two copies of it, it dilutes the color that's present. So this is either big D, it doesn't exist, or little d, it does exist. Recessive gene. The next one is the, uh, the B gene, for chocolate. Again, recessive gene. Takes two copies for express. There's two variations of this. That is either, well it could be big B, doesn't have chocolate, little b, it has what we call testable chocolate, or what we call as the Isabella version of, of chocolate. And there's another version of chocolate, which is called cocoa. And that one is either big CO, we don't have it, or little, um, little C, big CO, we don't have it, little CO, we have it. So there's two versions of chocolate, and this test only came about as of, February of 2020. So you're gonna see some people talking about dogs. You gotta be careful when you ask people about genetics because they, they could be using the old way of showing it. And so just because they, there's two versions, just uh, what I'm saying here is 
be careful to make sure you know which version you're talking about. We'll go into this in more depth when we talk about chocolates. Okay, Merle. This is another of those dominant genes. And the Merle gene is M. And either you have it or you don't have it. And it only takes one copy for it to show up. This is dominant again. It's the dominant gene. Fluffy. The fluffy gene. And this is L. And there's different versions of it. There's L1 through L4. And you have to have two copies for a dog to have the fluffy gene. To, excuse me, for the dog to show the fluffy characteristics. And then the last one we're going to talk about is the intensity gene. Intensity gene. And this is I. And you have to, again, it's a recessive gene. You have to have two copies of it. So you need to have the dominant version doesn't show up, or the lowercase version, the recessive gene, that you, you've got the intensity gene playing. So, um, those are all the colors that you can see in a report. Some of these colors interact with each other. Um, I'm, we, we'll talk a lot more about this later on in other videos, but basically, a chocolate dog combined with a blue dog makes a lilac dog. A chocolate dog combined with a blue dog and a cream dog um, makes for a platinum dog. Um, any of those dogs can be um, uh, also have other genes that will, will, will show things like tan points, if you get two copies of that. Brindling is a dominant gene. Any copy of Brindling there will show Brindling in those dogs' coats. Um, any dog that has two copies of, uh, of, of the uh, um, long-haired gene would be a fluffy. A dog that has a single copy of the moral gene would be a moral version of it. So there's some interaction amongst all of these, and that's really what makes these a little bit more complicated to interpret. Okay, enough of that. We've got that one out of the way. So now the next one is we're going to talk about the standard colors that you see in the show ring. So that's the next one that we're going to do. And again, subscribe to us. Go to My Breeder Supply. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to us. It helps us out. Give us comments. If there's things here that we've missed, let us know about it. Thanks, folks.